All right, I have some devices here, and I want to use my PC to configure the router. And we're just going to leave the switch as a, a default configuration. But I want to show you how to configure the router using the console cable. So first, I want to start with a console cable from the PC. And you can see my options are the RS-232, which is my, well, for the console. And then I've got my Ethernet. Ethernet is not how you configure it. So you want to run this over to the router and you can configure it to or connect it to the console port of the router. So let's also add the rest of the network lines in here. So we want to make sure we have a straight cable from the router and we'll go gigabit ethernet 00 down to our switch and we'll connect it to gigabit ethernet 01. And then we want to have something from the PC to the switch as well. So we'll go from fast Ethernet 00 to fast Ethernet. Yeah, right there. All right. So now we want to configure this router. So the first thing we do is we click on the PC. And you can see we have this desktop option right here. On the desktop, we can go to the terminal. The terminal is our terminal emulator, which will allow us to communicate with the router. So we want to do 9600 baud, we want to do the 8-bit, no parity, stop it 1, flow control, oh, none right there, and we're ready to go. Click OK, and now we have access to our router. Whenever you see this dialog, system configuration dialog, you just want to say no. You do not want to go in the configuration dialog wizard, it is difficult to make things work the way you want in there. So you then pop into this location. This is your user, you can see your user executive mode and you can see that with the greater than sign which means user mode and from here you want to enable to get into privilege mode and you notice there was no password that you had to type in. That's a bad thing. We want to make a password. So I'll go ahead and now go into my global configuration mode and I can do that by typing in conf or configure terminal. You can just type in conf t uh, but configure terminal. And here I want to set the host name. So I do host name and I'll call this one r1. I want to have a password. Now this is my enable password to get into privileged uh, mode so I do enable and I can either do password or I can do secret so do question mark you can see my options password or secret this password is an unencrypted password very insecure secret is well encrypted with an MD5 some or hash hash some so I want to have well let's go ahead and look at these without encryption first. So I do password and I'll do it something like Cisco. Nice easy password. And I'll do a secret one as well. And I'll call this one Aloha123, my super secret password. Now if you have both the password and the secret password it will use the secret because that one is more secure. If I wanted to see it I can type in exit and from here I can type in show running config or just show run and you can see in here my two passwords one is the secret password and it has an md5 checksum it is encrypted the other one is a unencrypted plain text password that can't be the same password but it's there all right quit out of that so I want to make sure those are hidden. So I can turn this service password encryption. So I go back into global configuration mode, conf t, and I type in service password encrypt password encryption. If I exit back out and take a look at the running configuration, you will see the password is no longer as plain. I can also look at that without jumping out by doing a do show 
run, which tells it to do the show run command from my privileged executive mode, not from global configuration mode. And you can see right here, the enable password is now hidden a little bit. It's a reversible encryption. It's very insecure, but for casual eyes, it does the job. Okay. In addition to setting a password, you want to set a message of the day. So do banner MOTD. And this message of the day should basically just tell people to stay away. You need to have a banner MOTD and then some character that starts out your message. And whenever that character appears again, the message is over. So I use something I'm not going to type. So a percent works great. No unauthorized access. And then another percent. And hit enter. And that becomes the message of the day. So when someone logs in or tries to connect, it will tell them no unauthorized access. And then they cannot say they didn't know. The next thing I want to do is I want to secure my console connection. So do line console zero, and I put a password here, password Cisco, and login says, yeah, you need to log in, and I'll exit out of that. So now the console password is set. From inside of that console zero section, I could have directly gone over to my telnet, my VTY0315, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to type the exit so I can get back to the global configuration mode. Line VTY 015. So I'm going into my VTY 0 through 15. So all of the VTY 0 through 15. And I'm going to once again set a password. Cisco. And have a login keyword that tells it that you need to, that you're actually going to be using the password and exit out of that. All right. If I were to run the do show run command here, I can see my password, my enable writer password. The secret password is definitely encrypted with MD5 checksum. And you can see down below that I have my console password is encrypted the same way as the unencrypted plain text Cisco password and the VTY passwords are also encrypted the same way. So it is very insecure. You can also see my banner of the day message. All right. In order to be able to communicate over the network, I need to have an IP address. And if we remember correctly, I set up the line going to give it Ethernet 00. zero. So I'm going to go in there, int or interface. G or gigabit, gigabit, Ethernet 0 slash 0. I can type in this, or if I wanted to, I can just type in int G 0 slash 0. I like it the shorthand. It's much easier. You can type in the long way. That's fine, too. All right. The first thing you want to do before you assign IP address is assign some kind of description to that interface. So this is my LAN gateway because it's the gateway going to the LAN. And I'm going to assign an IP address, IP address 192.168.0.1, and give it the mask of 255.255.255.0. Interfaces are by default turned off, so I need to remove the turn off command. Every time you want to remove a command, you just put the word no in front of it. So no shut down that removes the shutdown command that is in there by default. And now the interface is live. So I can go exit, exit out of that. And you can see that, well, it's done. Now I'm still on the PC, although I can slide this aside. And you can see that the PC to the switch is green, indicating it's live. The switch to the router well, one side was green, the other side was orange. The reason that one side was orange was because the switch was still trying to figure out its whole spanning tree issue, figure out if things are supposed to be up or not. So I'm going to close the desktop, and I want to do my IP configuration. Now, this computer has to be in the same network 
as the, the router. And I set the router as 192.168.0.1. So this one has to be something else. So I'll make it dot ten and automatically guesses my default well, my, my mask. And now my default gateway is gonna have to be the router's IP address, which is 192.168.0.1. And then I can put a DNS server in there if I have one. This right here will be all I need. So I can go ahead and close this. Now I can go to command prompt and I should be able to try doing a ping. Ping 192.168.0.10 to ping myself and it appears that I can ping myself. Then I try pinging the router. Ping 192.168.0.1 and it appears that I can ping the router as well. So then I try telnet, telnet 192.168.0.1. It says no unauthorized access. That's my message of the day. And now it says user access verification. I need to have a password. This is the VTY 0 through 15 password, which is Cisco. Now it gets me to this non-privileged mode. Well, in order to make any real configuration changes, you have to be able to type in enable. And then it prompts you for a password. Now, if you remember, I set two passwords. One was the enable password of Cisco, and one was the enable secret of Aloha 1.3. So I need to type in Aloha 1.2.3, and that will get me into my privileged mode. I can type in show run. So there we go. So this shows you how to get connected to the router over the network. You can see I used a console cable to initially configure the router. And then after that, I use Telnet to log into the router through the switch up to the router, just through the network. So there we go.